Ladies and gentlemen, what it do? It's going down. What? You ready? It's kind of smoky what's up in here. Up? What's up? What, <laughs> what did he say? What did he smoke? Yeah, Juan, este, Javi's over here on some, what did he smoke? <laughs> He's like you know, having a convo with the mic. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm all up on the I'm intimate with the mic. It keeps coming closer to me. No, I'm talking about mic all up in my grill. I like it. I like it, though, because I, I always stay too far away. Yeah, it's like shit. automated. Even Rob's got a mic this episode. Dude, it was so weird awesome. not having a mic or a camera. And a camera, bro. Yeah, I know. It was good, though. It was fun producing everything because with four people, it's a lot more yeah, to do. Yeah. But we, it was need fun. Se- we need to send Juan for Chick fil A more often. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, get, get Rob some camera time. <laughs> He's going to hear it like, fuck it. <laughs> that's, the, that's the cold word now. Uh, Chick fil A. Chick fil A. Chick fil A. Just pull on your left ear. Who wants Chick Fil A? <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? and then it'd be like, "Hey man, go get some Chick Fil A, big dog." People are arguing right now, like, "Ah, Chick Fil A, there's stuff that better out there," you know, such as Canes. I know, I would have said Canes. You know what I'm saying? But- well, Marisol, is she, what it is, bro, is she likes getting their little salad thing from there. Oh, Superfood, okay. superfood uh, salad. I think yeah, the kale thing, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is like doused in oil, yeah. and God knows what else. But um, yeah, I like that's how people, why people convince themselves that Chick Fil A is healthy fast food, as if there's such a thing <laughs> yeah i don't know man yeah i do right. agree it tastes cleaner yeah. it tastes you know you, you don't what it is is it do, you don't feel as guilty you know eating, well you're getting eating, protein eating, at least yeah, versus mcdonald's like versus like mcdonald's Eesh. like like it's just, it's just greasy and slutty when's the last time y'all had you know mcdonald's yeah make it deep that guilty pleasure the what the slutty yeah just a greasy it's dirty slutty, like the walk dirty, of shame a dirty little whore of a burger <laughs> okay you know, versus, you got, when you put it like that i want one. Oh my ver- god ver- versus like it, it yeah no it, 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 it it's that whole uh you know with chick-fil-a it feels more like more wholesome like the girl next door kind of vibe yeah because they're closed on sunday like this is the lord's burger this you're is my the, chick-fil-a the Lord's what, what happened nuggets? to the tequila bottle bro? Okay, oh let me go get it me and javi started you know, drinking it <laughs> It's, y'all, oh, y'all did? In, yeah, you want one? In, you want ranch water? Uh, Sure. Okay, right. It's a sponsor an episode, bro. Right, of course. Y- oil. Y'all keep talking because I'm not going to switch. Sure. Okay. Just keep... That's fine, brother. You um, know, thank you. I, I feel like that contributes <laughs> to, to the conversation. The Rob's like, oil. great. I fucking come in on my day off to record oh, y'all okay. shit. And y'all got me fetching fucking ranch waters. bartender. Fucking P. Diddy over here. Over fetching. here sending Juan for Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Hey, wait. Te gusta el cheesecake, carnal? <laughs> you know, that, that could be... Your, uh, hey, yeah. We hey, were wait, talking Chick-fil-A. on the last episode with T about, about, about your reality show, about your Diddy moment. Yeah. Oh, right? yeah. Send, send him for Chick-fil-A. Can you imagine if, like, if Theo... <laughs> Dude, we could actually do, like, some send, kind of series where, like... Send him for tacos? Where, like, different comedians could could do cameos. Like, say, say you're in town today. Uh-huh. We're knocking out some podcast episodes. And then pretend that, like, Theo Juve is making the band series is, like, popping on oh, YouTube. making the banda? Yeah. so he could be, And then you come out and you do your, like, Como La Flor thing. He's <laughs> yeah. like, ¿Sabes qué, carnal? You have some dance moves. You're <laughs> you know making it say? to the next step. <laughs> get, 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 get Midnight on there with his pipes, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. He get could do a, a, yeah. a Negro spiritual. Yeah. Yeah, he could bust out a, a Negro spiritual that you know he freestyled on top God, of his head. He could drop the first gospel banda album. Because <laughs> he could sing rancheras yeah, and everything, yeah. too. Yeah, you show sure right. <laughs> Have you ever heard him sing John Henry, Lay Yo Hammer Down? Yeah, boy, that, I mean, that, that, was my room, that was my roommate back in the day. It was always me, <laughs> me and me, I, which, which worked. When me and Midnight were in the hotel room together, two big boys, we get in that hotel room, we drop that motherfucker down to 60 degrees, as low as the, the hotel would let it go. Right okay. and, and, and hey, we're we're live on air. Look, Min, uh, Javi, say it again. What you I was, said. I was telling him how we'd freeze out the fucking La Quinta room. Like we dropped that air condition down together. Man, he asked me if I ever heard you sing John Henry. I go, man, I used to room with that motherfucker. You be used Lay to be there down. at night, fucking brushing his teeth on my John <laughs> Henry. Fucking, we'd, we'd we'd have the air condition on sixty degrees, like it matched. You know. Then Is I started two room, bears, one cave. Two bears, one cave. Then I start. Then I started rooming with Bryson. Oh. You know, and he he's from a tropical climate, <laughs> you know, so he's got to have it at eighty five degrees. Yeah. So then it just became yeah, a race man, to whoever yeah, got man, there like, first gets the gets the AC. Go ahead, Benet. Uh, him and blame Bryson yeah. and blame you had to have it mm-hmm. on like uh, mm-hmm. on on eighty, almost ninety. Yeah, they they mm. they're tropical people. They're, Notorious, they're, they're, and, and they're skinny too. Yeah, they're like the part of the ten percent body fat crew. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, if it's if it's not seventy two degrees, that like like seventy two degrees, that's their like hour. That's like hour sixty one. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. drop we we drop that shit all the way down. Just as soon as we get in, it's just 
<laughs> See how low that bitch go? Yeah, we, so, start, we start looking for the thermostat as soon as we get in there. So, sounded, sounded like we were on the prices right. <laughs> Javi, come on over. <laughs> Damn, this one only goes down to 64. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, yeah. Mid- Midnight's doing a show with Ken Flores out of Chicago t- uh, tonight, right? Midnight? Yeah, yeah. It was uh, Renee Vaca and uh, uh, Ken Flores, man, from oh, Chicago. Hey. And, uh, I went from, uh, from uh, L.A., man. So I haven't seen yeah, that man. dude. He's coming down to Corpus, so hopefully I get to take oh, him Ken? out. Is uh, Ken? No, Renee. Oh, okay, Renee okay. is. Sorry. Yeah. Well, hey, y'all got to do a triple threat tour with, with Ken and uh, just all like, you know, big boy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Big boy in it. Oh, that'd be dope. that would be dope, man. Yeah. yeah man. Well, hey, brother, just want to check in. I know I just called you five minutes ago, but uh, hey, man, we got to get you to Houston so we can get you on the show in vivo. On the what did he oh, say? Oh yeah, man. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be there, man, pretty soon, bro. All right, bet when you're not on the road. All right, for sure. All right. Went away. Lay your hammer down. Yeah, man. Lay yo. I'm telling you, bro, making the banda, bro, with Theo Hoovy. Hell yeah, Making bro. the banda with Theo Hoovy. You got your keys on you, Chino? So no, pop- he took the... Uh, oh, he took them. He em. took the truck. Yeah. Damn, let me open mm-hmm. it then. Yeah, what? The banda. No. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, if not, I'll wait. Oh, if not, I'll wait. We're going to do some Tehuacan. Do for, for the sponsor, shout out. Shout out Tehuacan Mineral Water and Pie Tequila. We are combining them for a ranch water experience. Hey, the experience. Lay your hammer down. John Henry. That's good. I, I do like the the do like the, the the concept of the the ranch water because like me and Rob were talking, you know, mm-hmm. but you you hydrate while you dehydrate. While you're out you know? there doing man shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's for that's what it is for, right? Ranch water. You're out in the ranch. There ain't no, it's the no official. shade. Yeah, this is the official ranch water of the... Uh, but you still want to sip on something, you know, feel some kind of way, you know get, get, you, get you, get you uh, some tequila and some mineral water. You know what's crazy, bro? Ye- yesterday, we recorded an episode with the owner of the tequila uh-huh. company, of Pie Tequila, and we ended up somehow Googling, uh, like, health benefits of tequila, mm-hmm. and, like, 15 pretty legit... You know, I don't know the data and the science on it, Yeah. but I trust the science when it comes to this. It was mm-hmm. saying, like... Um, I think it was almost like a probiotic, uh, di- good for digestion. Yeah. Um, that it, well, he was saying, uh, ever, ever the owner, he was saying that it's the only alcohol that's more of a uh, keep your spirits up, not like a right. like wind down your energy down drops. Yeah, you can actually. Well, you trying to go to sleep? Effervescent on tequila. You know, that's why they say tequila makes your clothes fall off. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> Is it the? Because what? Hold on, don't, it's don't, a country song. Oh, uh, tequila okay. Tequila makes your clothes fall out. Like, okay. Like, it, it, like, the, like alcohol actually is a is a depressant. That's why mm-hmm. some people like get real fucking yeah. sad. She took the dog, yeah, bro. Yeah, the fucking and, dog, fucking eh. bro. No mames, el perro, You know, it, and you get real sad like that. But tequila is like, yeah, it's an actual like lift you up. I can see that. Is it? Did he say? Is it the only plant based? Plant derived. Wow, that's a, a good plant. question. Plant derived. Well, not plant because, like, do you consider well, potato or rice plant? You see, I don't know. Mm, a plant is more green. Right, because this actually comes from a right, like the, the, agave. Gua, the agave, right? Yeah. So, so I, the fermented everything else is, sugar. is gr- from grain. Yeah, grain or whatever, right? Rice, which is corn. which grain is like a it's a byproduct of of, of the plant, or but ultimately, that works. ultimately, you get you. You squeezing out the sugar from either right. You're just getting the sugar from whatever. Ultimately, it's gonna have to be sugar. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm just wondering why why tequila seems to have more be health so, benefits so than, different than your normal. Yeah. I mean, it's my alcohol of the, choice. The nectar of the gods. See, pretty you know much. What I'm saying, dude, it goes um, back to your ancestors, the Mayans. Yeah. You know what I'm right? First contemplated the Viva la raza. The, 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 the number zero, zero. Did did, did the the minds make no, that up? No, or you, you uh, that's what a movie. it said. In, I'm starting to uh, stand deliver. Okay, you call stand deliver. Oh, almost, but but uh, apparently, I don't, I don't, that was that's one claim. But maybe fake but news. around the same time that that the Arabics contemplated it. But I guess it's probably on some like uh, archaeological shit. Like oh, they were doing that math mm-hmm. even before. We were, it was done. Uh, they found proof of it over there. Yeah, there's always a debate, right? Like who. Who came up with zero first? Yo, man, 
Are you familiar with like pi, the number, and how and why? And how it was. Yeah, like what's the out? purpose of it? Nah. How they figured it out or what? Nah, math okay. history. Nah. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, math no, history. I don't know. Well, because it is. Because, cause, like, uh, mathematician, like, was, like, at one point, like, a rock star. Uh, like profession, oh. dude. Like, like when you go back to like even like probably like Einstein and stuff, because these were the motherfuckers that were figuring out how the how the world worked, right? You go back to you know in math and, and science and, and and there was like things that were just like oh that's you know why ancient cultures had like gods of this and gods of that because it's the only explanation you could you can fathom why why this thing works. Right, and then, then when you get into the divinity of numbers and and why why we can start explaining some shit, that's why like early like scientists were like seen like witches or like mm. something evil because you're trying to explain something that we've already accepted as just the way it is, mm-hmm. you know, kind of. Kinda and back same. then it was all kind of like dichos and like superstition, right? And, like not a lot of it was just tradition. Like oh, you know, that's. When you hear the howl, the, the howl of a of a wolf three times consecutive, <laughs> that means someone's pregnant. <laughs> it's like what? Don't let her near the tomato sauce. She's menstruating right now. She can't make the sauce. Right. Like what? Or like my babysitter, bro. She's still on a lot of like. Oh, your kids are having nightmares. Y'all got spirits in here. Right. What spirits? Right. Which when you get down to it, right? Like when you talk about stuff like like spiritual stuff like that. Well, scientifically, we know negative and positive energy is a thing. Like yeah. you, you can absorb certain energy, so so it's just what, what maybe like a like a like an older culture or understanding of the world would be an evil spirit. We're talking about like uh, there's just there's some negativity, there's some tension in 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 the house, like something some some mm-hmm. something's off. It needs to get you yeah. know. So she busts out. The next thing you know, it's like she's burning sage. She's mm-hmm. like, bring me that Ozarka water bottle that got holy water in it. Yeah, and she's doing something with that. Mm-hmm. Or, like, for example, my baby's allergies are bad. She's like, see, y'all need to bring me some more chia seeds. Y'all done used up all the chia seeds. Right. Which was a little concoction yogurt thing. Right. And a lot of it, and some of that stuff I'm sure there's work, a lot of, yeah. But there's a, there's a scientific re- reason that, that it may be un, unknown to the the uh, the user of it, right? But, oh, but there's a reason why the, the yogurt did what it what it did. Or there, there's a, you, you know the probiotics right the pro the, yeah the, yeah there's probiotics in there and whatever but it's just you know the way the body works but mm-hmm. you know it's ba- it's a but since if you don't know that scientific reason then it's just going to be a superstition like i don't yeah. this works i don't know what, why does it work it's i don't cause. know it just it just does it works cause. <laughs> you know whatever it's all good yeah man like, where's his bartender at? His bartender slash <laughs> Hey, I like that shirt, producer. Big Dog. Oh, Not for you. everybody. Not for everybody. This was uh, the, the limited edition vintage. If you rip it, I will sock your nose. That's, uh, that's uh, Jack Black from High Fidelity. Uh, you're not I a will fan. sock your nose. Yeah. He fucking, he, he, uh, he, he's, he, he, have you seen High Fidelity? Mm-hmm. Where he's like, a, they're like all record store nerds. Hey, you ain't lying. Uh, Rob disappeared. He done, he done, dis- he done straight he's like, disappeared. Fuck he's, he's like, man, well, y'all, y'all good with one camera view. Yeah. You know, this will be a bonus episode or, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, this is a bonus episode. Well, whatever. Brought to you by Manscaped.com. Oh, get the sponsors in. Manscaped.com. You know, that's a promo code situation. Hit them. Uh, hey, Ma- Manscaped, if you want to sponsor the tour, we're open to that discussion. Yeah. Uh, but at the moment, You're thank pod- you for listening, for uh, helping out the listeners of the podcast, hooking them up with the promo code 20% off with promo code chingo 20 percent promo 20 percent go yes sir trim, trim, trim it up trim trim the forest yeah down there. yeah the muffler you know get, get the muffler the forest I'm looking like... right high and tight but you know what? i ain't gonna lie bro like at first i was just like okay what is the big fuss it's just like some trimmer things and then yeah. it's like uh you know you just start walking around it's feeling me. a little bit taller it's me you just I, your shoulders go back the landscape's a, a little different you know what i'm saying yeah, you're, um, you got, you got to have the right tool for the for the job. You don't want to. You don't want no nicks, scrapes. You, you don't want to get down there with the Norelco. No. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh no, no, no. You don't get down there yeah, with mess up with, mess up with one the, side of your satchel. Yeah, with the Mach three, like this is this is uh, you know this no. is designed for that yeah. terrain. Yeah, yeah, you know which is saying? a very very specific terrain. You know? Manscaped.com <laughs> at checkout. Punch in promo code Chingo and get twenty percent off. We appreciate Chingo. that big time. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All the waterproof and, gadgets. You know what I'm saying? And then the, you got the, the pie we already did. Oh, yeah. Pie tequila. Uh, fascinating. He was saying, he said, if you ever want to clog up a computer and just overrun its processes, mm -hmm. just tell it to calculate pie. He says, you could print out the yeah, number on pretty, sheets of paper and it'll that, go around yeah, the globe. Yeah. Ain't that some shit? That part I knew, yeah. Like a trillion digits. He's, I think he said they're not even done finding pie. They're like, they're at, currently at like a trillion digits. Yeah. But don't, haven't they come up with quantum computing yet? Oh, I not don't yet. Know. I don't okay, know, man. I just figured out my, my Google Drive password the other day, <laughs> man. I was locked out of that bitch for about a month. Yeah. So now you got Buku scripts you and all type of shit. You know, it's in that Google Drive. I can't wait till that Chick Fil A get here, though. Uh, by the way, um, I hope he. I had to tell him like which Chick Fil A to go to uh -huh. because he. I noticed he not only is Juan on three C fours, but he hit the weed a couple times. And I don't know how that's gonna mix with three C fours, and you you end up at the wrong Chick Fil A. It's probably even them out. Yeah, that's out actually that's true. <laughs> the adaptogens, carnal, start yeah. getting in there. Thas, thas. Yeah, damn, damn, shit. <laughs> and then plus some, man, fuck it, let's throw some tequila in the tequila mix. Tequila in the mix, man. We're feeling feeling good. Hey, you know, low key. You know what's funny, episode. man? You know what's funny is uh, this spot. You know, we 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 trying to launch it as a peer space as well. Um, photography, <laughs> photography and stuff. So anyway, my wife, she's doing some stuff in the back. And she walks in to like the cloud, like the loudness, the cloud of smoke. And she's just like, golly, what y'all, what's going on up in here? But by then, you know, it's like now I'm in rapper mode. You know, that boy yeah. T just left. And I'm yeah. like, shit, you know, you know who you married? You know what it was before it even was. <laughs> you know what it was before it even was. What? <laughs> shit. Why, why are you talking like that? I've been that? like this. Been what? Like <laughs> you, knew, you knew what? You knew who I was. You knew my lifestyle. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes you gotta, you know, you might have to take somebody to the train station 12:30 at night. You're like, baby, I'll be back. You know what I'm saying? Gotta go do a thing. Yeah, man, I don't even. I don't feel like I even like. Roll, Get us away. I don't even like roll up I anymore. Like, like. What? Where'd you go? No, and there's nothing in the in the kitchen. I had to like make makeshift uh, bottle opener. Oh, Bro, shit. it wasn't that serious. We could have just waited on Juan. Nah, it's serious for me. All right, well, thank you. Dang. Cheers. How'd you get the other one open? Uh, Which just happened to be open? No, uh, Juan was still here, so I used the bottle opener. How do I not have a bottle opener on me? Well, oh, no. when we finish decorating the set, we'll probably have one uh, oh. attached to the wall, like you in the man cave, Big Doc. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Might had to go to Qu Home Depot for that one. Quintuple dip. Get you the official chingo bottle opener so you can open up your Tehuacan mineral, the, mineral water. And drink what I drink. Drink the ranch water we drink. Proud sponsored. And use the same abridor that we have here on set. You know what I'm saying? Get your own line. That's a quintuple dip, carnal. You know what I'm saying? Quintuple. Uh, I'm going to hit Raymond like, wait till I show you the quintuple, quintuple. dip. Shit, you ain't up on it, man. We monetize, <laughs> we monetizing everything up in this bit. That's how you do it. You know what I'm saying? But real talk, Um, I mean, shout out to, I mean, this particular show doesn't have a Patreon, but uh, I'll have this discussion with Rob. Rob's the guru of all this shit, but like, mm -hmm. what could we do to make it because I know right now it's an RPT, a Red Pill Tamales Patreon that we have. Mm -hmm. But if we were to repurpose it or change the logo or I don't know if that gets too confusing. If people are like, hey, I signed up for a political show, not a network of four or five shows. But uh, in my right. opinion, if we were to make it like, hey, this is the umbrella uh, uh, landing page, for if you network. will, for the network. So that if there was a bonus episode with like yo we got beat king here esg javi luna or we got juan villarreal mm. stopping by you know danny guerrero you know whoever it may be and be able to be like all right well the rest of the episode is going to be for the patrons mm -hmm. right and have it still be that instead of like oh no every show needs their own yeah i thought about that too man like having just yeah. the chingling network patreon for supporters and let me ask you guys as comics because i've been mm -hmm. i told so yesterday i was uh, nerding out on old business books that i'd read prior to like ever starting any entrepreneurial endeavors so and it was i was reading about like uh sales vehicles you know like what is your sales vehicle and as an entertainer or as like even podcast the the audience is the biggest vehicle because it's the, what's driving the eyes the ears the ticket buyers right so it's having the more content basically the volume of content is going to stack upon itself the more that you do right mm -hmm. there's very little things that you could do as a comedian because jokes don't really they, they wear out like they're mm -hmm. they flame out yeah but content stacks upon itself when you get you know either the virality of something or the algorithm catches you or just fans that like it and share it to where people so what you're saying is as a sales vehicle volume mm -hmm. in something like a medium like podcasting starts to snowball correct because someone might discover your show they might discover this show a year from now <clears throat> right and then now they're back binging yeah 
pretty that, much. Is yeah. That that, what, yeah, that's pretty close. To, yeah, that's that's pretty dead on. And also like the amount of value you can offer with like a network. But I, I was gonna ask you guys, like, how do like how do you think networks because podcasts have been talking about this forever? And I think it was Adam Curry on Rogan recently was like, networks just don't work. Podcast really? networks, right? Uh-huh. I don't know if you guys had, had any opinion on that. Like I don't know if you know about like all things comedy, how they work it, or maybe even your mom's house. I mean so I know all all things comedy, it you know, what little I know about it. I don't I know when when they started they were big on, you know, the the artists own the podcast and giving them the the most that they could out of, out of the mm-hmm. out of the deal because because I think prior to that like I think comics were like starting podcasts with these networks and and they produce it and then and then the show gets big and the the actual comic that they blew up ain't getting yeah you know nothing off it other than you know maybe selling some some tickets but as far as like this the sponsorship and all that shit they weren't getting yeah too much so i think all, all things comedy aims to to kind of like do give a little bit more is mm. what i understand it they're trying to they're trying to be for the artist yeah you know kind of network you know yeah i think the rogan always says like they basically have a network but it's just like friends that come on the show and then friends help friends grow like yeah that seems like if you're being super altruistic, it's the best way to go. Yeah. It might have like the best potential because everybody wants to come on the show and then they want to share out their friend's show. It's not like a monetary network. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm almost like a co op situation. Basically, yeah, co op. Yeah. yeah. That's what yeah. the Hoover and the band has here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I think that I think that way works, right? Because cause other than that, like when it's it's just and I know comics that have, you know, oh, with this this media company or whatever and they're gonna they have a studio we can go into and 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 sit down but but you know you're not retaining any kind of yeah no ownership or copyright for any of that material that you're in content you're generating other than the only thing you're really getting off of it is 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 your views which is great Mm -hmm. you know nothing against that but Mm -hmm. but uh yeah and and then it's it's like anything it's just so easy to you know i can just create a network I can go home now. Hey guys, I got a I got a podcast network, yeah. you know, and and all all your streams are now my mine, you know, whatever, you know, and uh, some so I I was on one when I first started, and it wasn't really like it was I was still producing and whatever it was it was all mine, and they weren't really doing anything other than they had a web page where they would put up your mm-hmm. your podcast at, and that was that was basically their network like like this, hey these are all the podcasts under our umbrella and, and that was cool what's funny about the time we live in now is that, uh like these old marketers have talked about like through time there haven't been that many uh, examples of cheers gentlemen cheers? as you speak as i cheers all right I, I, I can't reach can't reach oh man you guys are old it's such a big podcast <laughs> studio it's hard to reach across like if you think about the big vehicles for sales and eyeballs back in the day it was newspapers first mm-hmm where the newspaper would get paid by the person buying the newspaper and paid by the advertisers advertising on the newspaper. Then came cable. You paid for cable, and then advertisers were paying the cable companies to advertise on cable. Now you've got social media, right? That's another like double dip for them, where they're having advertisers pay to be on social media, right? And they're getting paid, basically, because we're the product. Our information is the product. Our data is the product. So... It's like there aren't that many blips in time where you're going to have examples like that. Newspaper, cable, and then social media. And the, the argument they're making is that like 10, maybe 15 plus years from now, this opportunity for volume of eyeballs won't be at the scale that it is now. It might be something else, but it's like take advantage of it now because it won't happen for a long time after this. After this meaning, what do you mean? Like Mr. The example was Mr. Beast. Like uh-huh. he won't like for Mr. Beast to get 20 billion views on something uh-huh. in 20 years probably isn't going to happen. So whatever he's doing examples like that today is is figure that out for whatever your sales vehicle or whatever you want your sales vehicle to be if it is an audience do as much as you can to get as many eyeballs so that later when this blip in time is gone and you're not having to figure out like what's what's after the internet what's after youtube essentially was the example they gave and they're like do it now like you won't have another blip in time where you can get that many eyes and ears which obviously we're trying to do but Mm -hmm. it's like what is it exactly you know what's another example of sales vehicle because i'm not sure i'm grasping yeah what what did he say yeah what (laughs) yeah what did he so in order to generate money uh-huh. that's your sales vehicle for you guys it would be ticket sales is sales vehicle one the podcast like ad revenue sales vehicle two uh-huh. anything that brings in money and then you figure out which sales vehicle scales the fastest and then compounds onto itself 
So content compounds because people share it, people keep watching it, they go back and listen. I listen to old podcasts all the time just because it's fun. Yeah. But products, they don't really do that. You have to either invent a really good product people want to continue to buy or reproduce product after product after product and keep selling and selling and selling versus having one thing that drives the sales and drives your revenue up. Okay. Does that make sense? Like touring yeah. is a sales vehicle that will always exist as long as you're on the road. And it can compound upon itself if fans say, you got, next time he's in town, you got to come watch the show. You know, you, you missed a really good show or whatever. But there aren't very many things that I think entertainers can do off the bat if they don't really have a large audience to do that. So you got to pick the one thing, which touring, obviously. Content is the second one, I would guess. And then figure out how to compound the eyeballs onto that. Mm -hmm. And it content for you guys or for us, I guess, mm -hmm. is what it is. So that's why like this little hack I talk like creating more volume faster allows you to put it out and then scale it with the next show so that you can bank a bunch of stuff and always be in the flow. Okay. Basically, he's telling me I need to get into the studio <laughs> and drop some hot fire. Actually, that's true too, man. Music. I, I understood a lot of them words, man. All right. I don't, I don't know if you. I don't even remember this. The studio was loud as fuck about twenty minutes ago. So I was. I was, it was really, loud. I was really trying to key in onto all. <laughs> so shit, I'm gonna remember some of them words and later. And, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, gonna write that shit down. Understand what you just told. Dude, it's just about figuring this shit out every <laughs> day, me. man. <laughs> I'm gonna go home. Tell about, hey, babe, Rob said we need a new vehicle. <laughs> yeah, sales vehicle. <laughs> he said, he, said, he like, said sales vehicle. He said I gotta get a sales vehicle so I can get to the shows. I don't know, maybe a Kia or something reliable. After, after Rob's, <laughs> after Rob's speech, Javi's like. <laughs> so you said I need to wrap wrap a vehicle <laughs> so I can sell. He wants me to sell cars. I don't know. He said sell sales vehicles. What what after uh, YouTube? I, I, don't, I don't know. That's that fucking nerdy uh, marketing I, talk. I don't know man. what comes after YouTube. <clears throat> VR plugging the fuck in. VR. That's it, bro. That's I, I, future man. Wait. Wait till um. Wait till one of these podcasts pops off to where like to the level to where like. To where like this would be dope, where it's like, all right, in some of the markets where you having to do like a Wednesday or a Thursday, mm -hmm. shit like that. It's like no, now you're doing a whole weekend. Mm -hmm. So like you love the city, you know there's potential there, you know. But it's it's like you 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 can settle in, do a whole weekend, and not just be so beat up, like flying in, flying out, yeah, type of thing. But like in a perfect world where it's like you could really pick and choose and just be like, bro. Like, I don't envy you being out there on the road like crazy. Like, imagine being able to like, well, shit, I'm at my house right now. Mm -hmm. Like, how relaxed can we make this be? How mm -hmm. comfy can we do this? So, like, when uh, Juan and I were driving back after the corporate show, um, I forget what he said. <laughs> what did he say? What did he say? To where basically I was like, I was like, basically, bro, next time I do corpus, mm -hmm. if it's going to be in a more like really more relaxed manner... Like, what does that look like? I said, for one, it'd be like, well, I hung out with my kids in the day uh, on the mm -hmm. beach. Um, you're going to know I was in Corpus because I'm going ha to have to have a killer tan when yeah. I come back. Like, hey, man, where you been? Did you do some fishing? Actually, I did. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, like, um, like have my family there, settle in, get some sun, mainly. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you do so much like... Well, it hasn't really been summer and all the summery, sunny, but like, it's like, man, when you're, you're having to pick and choose, like, all right, I'm going to jujitsu, that's indoors. Yeah. And after that, probably get something to eat. After that, go to the hotel. Yeah, now Cor Corpus is, is is great for that. A lot of comics do enjoy. I mean, granted, we're no, we're not Miami. Yeah, we're not. Shit, hell, we're not even Galveston. But y'all got palm trees and we shit. Know, we got th palm trees. We got sand. We got beach. Y'all kind of nicer than Galveston. We got bro. good fishing. Y'all nicer than Galveston. I agree. I agree. Galveston's yeah. little. So so comics do like it. You know, if you do like the beach, if you like a little bit of sun, or if you like to play, we got nice some okay golf courses down there. You know, whatever you're into, there's good fishing if you're. In into fishing um and yeah that attracts people because it's kind of like okay i'm working but it's kind of on some little bit vacation mm -hmm. there's some shit. water kind of nearby and know? those are fun it's kind of like that's why i love going when we go to denver every year man it's a little <laughs> no ocean little no little beach big, 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 <laughs> well but there's different stuff right i grew up on the beach so to me i like mountains and yeah, shit yeah, like yeah. that like i get off on that and that's like i even love going out to el paso new yeah. mexico and like like to them they're like oh these aren't even that big of mountains i'm like this shit bigger than yeah. any Shit, we got hills, and I mean, I'm talking about like little, little hills in Corpus. I, I grew up at sea level, so so you know, it's just a change of scenery is nice. And, yeah. And uh, uh, I like the Denver Zoo. Me and his sister Rejo, back in the day, we we went we went high as fuck to the De the Denver Zoo. Didn't y'all do some jokes that night? Around. Yeah, we did about some jokes the about the zoo. Yeah, I don't remember what what we were 
both riffing on. We well, almost had a damn good time. Yeah, we had a good time. Sure, I, I even hung out an extra day that first time we did it, and I did a. They had a free day at the Denver Museum of Natural Science or whatever it was called. So I went and and did you know, hung out there. I actually ran into some people who had come to one of the shows that weekend there because it was like a like a free admittance day, so everyone and their mother was out there. <laughs> And uh, so they're like, oh, we saw you at Chingo Bling this weekend. What are you doing here? Like, oh, I stayed an extra day. I'm going to do some open mics. Like, I came to the museum. I was high as fuck. I went to the planetarium. They had a planetarium in there, which is great. Like, I, I was just... Hey, meanwhile, I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to go back to Denver. Like, I love Denver. I always try yeah. to line up my shows around my birthday just because mm-hmm. it's like a little treat for me. But uh, this year, we're having our meeting uh-huh. about the tour. Oh, and my soul is kind of like, eh, yeah. Right. It's all right. You're all right. You might want to cool off on it. And I'm like, no, you I don't know. want to cool off on it. She's like, you know, maybe, you know, fall back a little bit. You had a good run. Damn, what uh, you mean wait, I had a good wait, run? You know, let me, let, <laughs> you know, let me sell these the, the, these uh, yeah. yoga pants. Yeah, let me you know? get back on my boutique, uh, you know little one. Yeah. <laughs> let me focus on the boutique right quick. You know what I'm saying? Let me, <laughs> and you are? Go, you can go do a couple of your shows, you know. All right. He want to do a couple of little shows, <laughs> shows for your little tour. You know, you want to go... Go do your comedy thing. I know you love it. Where you want to go, Papas? Oklahoma City? You want, you want to go to Oklahoma City, Papas? You said you had fun papas. there? Papas. <laughs> like you sleepy, Papas? Like midnight? Papasito? Yeah, I love that joke, man. Oh, yeah. Don't you do sleepy, that, though. Papas. Boy, you sleepy, Papas. There was always one Papas at the end of, uh-huh. at the, end of the night. Uh-huh. And then we had Papas after the and show. Papas. <laughs> well, that was about the dude that, like... Like his girl babies him or had he, 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 you like yeah. spoiled, motherfucker. He, he, yeah, you look spoiled. Like she, spoiled ba- she baby talks to you. Like you come home tired. Oh, I'm feeling kind of babe, babe. I'm feeling kind of tired. Oh, you, sh- you oh, sleepy, you papa. Sh- oh, papa. You you sleepy, papa. Papa, papa. <laughs> you sleepy. But he would, he would do it, bro. He'd milk it, and the fucking crowd is just like falling apart, like. Ah! Like people about to piss their pants, G papas, and then it'll become a call back. Like, Hold on, papas, I ain't talking to you. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, man. That it's masterful. Early, it's that, technique. That, that it's called early, technique. That, that, early, <laughs> that early midnight shit, man, was, is, is, I mean, he's great now, but but even even back then, I mean, he was just doing some, some great shit. And it's one of those iron sharp, sharp, sharpens iron yeah. situations. Oh, yeah. Like rolling with him like, yeah. like made me such a better comic because I, I knew he was going to kill it and he's this high energy comic and I I can't do that. So my I had to go the other way with my writing and like, man, I got to get even sharper with the writing just to... Just to stay level with what he's bringing to the table. And then me, fucking rapper, what did he say? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Coming in trying to keep up. Because, man, it, it's like a party when Midnight hits the stage, man. He's yeah, one, it's he's like high guys, energy. Like, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll just to give him props real quick on this story specifically. We are doing um, Alabama. I'm trying to remember the city. It might have been Mobile. One of them cities, dog. But we're in Alabama. And it was like a new club. The club still smelled like paint and carpet. Like it was Yo. super brand new. Oh, it was me, Jerry Garcia, who always kills. He's yeah. not used to having a rough night. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. And uh, so Jerry had a rough time. I had a rough time. But in the middle, midnight came. And like we, it's almost like me and Jerry misread the crowd. Uh-huh. And he was able to disarm, figure out who the problem was. He basically like won the girls over. Mm-hmm. And... Because we're just kind of looking at the crowd like, damn, these some Alabama Mexicans, you, you know? Cause, so some of the fool and the nah, dick, some of that shit ain't going to hit from yeah. Jerry. Mm-hmm. Or some of his jokes, they were just being very tight because right. this little group of chicks over here were like the fucking trendsetter setting the mood. Like if they were going to be difficult, it just kind of made everybody else difficult. Well, Midnight came out, figured the shit out, fucking dropped the bomb on them, like won them over. Up, oh, bitch, happy birthday, bitch, or something. Next thing you know, it's like... Oh fuck! He like the room wasn't the problem. Yeah, that raw shit. Yeah, he yeah. He, Crowd he, control. That was a star star dome, right? Was no, it? no, 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 no. That was no. That's also that's in. I think that's in Alabama as yeah. well. I think, but no, this was a club that's um. It was a branch under Stand Up Live. Oh okay. So the folks that own Phoenix also own uh i think they own west palm beach uh-huh. but they, i think that's one of theirs okay yeah cool. that's where we um i think you've been there we met we met the white gentleman oh brian Persane, yeah that yeah. that club okay okay yeah I like so i've probably only done it twice that's cool yeah i haven't heard that name in forever brian Persane. he's out there man he's i mean he's one of those alt comic guys that you know he don't need to be famous he's got his 
little fans and followers. I mean, he, he, had, he had a good show out there before, right? We did after him. He did an early show that night. That's how I know and it. He was getting mm-hmm. off stage as we were it's getting funny. Ready. I was watching Seinfeld last night, one of the episodes with him in it. And yeah. I was like, oh, I haven't seen that guy in forever. And then he mentioned him today. I'm like, that's just weird. Yeah, we, we there's a while there where we were running into some... some we ran into T.J. Miller mm-hmm. in Nashville when he was shooting his special. He shot his special at Jenny's Nashville. Oh, no and, shit. And, and we were there as he was doing his technical run-through. They had that backdrop where he had a whole wall of, of made-up comedy club names. In the same in the font, same font of the, yeah. Oh, it was cool. like chuckle bucket and whatever. Funny shit. And yuck, yeah. Yuck yeah. yucks and well, I think yuck. Yeah, was that's actual, Canadian. Uh, yeah. uh, it was actual. It's club, actual club, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's Canada. an actual club. But it, it was like it was. They were all like clearly made up fictional <laughs> comedy. Did, I wonder if that ever. Aired. It just came out. I, could, I just saw someone uh, take a picture of it uh, on their like they were watching on TV, and I was all like, I, I was there. I got I got to see that. So he must have he must have had up. the weekend, and then mm-hmm. you and I were doing the Thursday. Yeah, the next night that he was shooting his yeah. special there. The next, I think I think yeah, I think we were there like on a Wednesday or Thursday or something something like that. You, you know what's the next coolest thing to doing stand up and being out there on stage and on the road, you know, making people laugh mm-hmm. is podcasting. Like in your home state, or at right. least where you drove up, so in your neck of the woods, right. and talking about the shit. That's mm-hmm. the next fucking best thing because traveling is a bitch sometimes, man. And some of the mm-hmm. headaches that come with different shit. But um, thankfully, uh, thankfully, man, I'm trying to line up jujitsu, jujitsu, the, the tequila kicking you in. Okay, papas. The BJJ papas. Uh, my BJJ travel thing. When I go to Naples and shit like that, because the folks in Cal Island, man, they like hospitality, put me up on game. Hey, look, hey, carnal, hey, when you do this, homie, hey, that's they, the homo plata. People thinking it's like this, but you gotta, you gotta do this, and this is why your triangle ain't working. You know what I mean? And this is active guard and all these things. I'm like, fuck, dude, I gotta write all this shit down. But so that was definitely um, a highlight. And uh, I was, I took Penny to jujitsu the other day. And there were a couple other dads that I recognized from class because I'm one of the dads that, like, I got a membership and I go and them other two cats, too. And uh, we were just chit-chatting, right? And I don't know how it came up, but I basically said, like, uh, well, when I travel, I try to, like, visit and drop in some of these other cities. And after a little while, they're like, hey, man, so, so what do you do that you get to travel and, and do jujitsu on the road type shit? Because I think they both were complaining about, like, man, been missing a lot. It's hard to get it in sometimes. And I told them, like, stand-up comedian. They are just like, oh, shit, dude, that's fucking badass. So it's like, hold on, bro. So you telling me, so so what's your name again? And where you be doing shows at type yeah. of thing? What, yeah. You going to be at the improv? I was like, ah, I don't know, carnal. You know, it's tricky right now. We, <laughs> I'm on, uh, got demoted, <laughs> if you yeah, will. Dude. You know, you sold so much liquor for us that we're going to say that. Yeah, that you got to do a Wednesday now Ain't that some at shit. this percentage, but it's okay. But it's all right. A, that's all the negotiation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All those negotiations yeah. still happening. We ain't tripping. It's all love. Um, but yeah, it's like man, can't take that shit for granted. That the the other jujitsu dads are like, man, mm-hmm. so hold on, bitch, you get to do jujitsu out of town too, mm-hmm. and and what gyms have you been to? And that is, but a it helps. Cool it helps keep the travel blues away, right? Because oh, when you're traveling just for the sake of of of, of work, like. When you get there that day, check in at the hotel. If you're lucky, you get a nap, and and, and, and you, you go do the show. You go you go grab something to eat on the way back to the hotel, and you're flying out the next morning. Like that's okay once in a while, but when that's like your uh, life, like you're literally just la- landing and leaving, landing and leaving. It's, yeah, go ahead. It, you know, it, it, well, it wears on the soul, man. Like mm-hmm. so, having those little adventures while you're out there help, helps Side keep quest. it fresh. But you know what? Um, Side quest. Very uh, and thankful. That's content on its own, man. That's yeah. True. Dude, very thankful and blessed that like I've heard I forget who I was listening to when they were saying I think it was Willie Barcena and George Lopez. Mm-hmm. Um where they were talking about those like, man, you're solitary, you you flying in, you're mm-hmm. at the airport, you're here, you're checking into the hotel, and you're just kind of waiting around, and then finally mm-hmm. you're out there and people know who you are and they laughing and shit, then then you're done and you gotta somehow figure yeah. out how you're gonna go to sleep. That, that's how you end up drinking too much. That's what they were saying. Partying too much. That's getting hooked they, on some shit you ain't got no business uh, fucking with in uh, the first Fucking place. with hoes or some goofy ass shit you ain't supposed to be doing. Right. But check this out. Dude, I literally was listening to them say that and I thought to myself, well, thank God that I was blessed with like such, not only great comedians, but like 
friends, funny people that like, mm-hmm. I never felt that. I never went through the fuck I, because I was blessed enough to be able to do um, legit shows, sure. weekends or something to yeah. where to where we're able to guarantee this is my commercial. This is my sales mm-hmm. vehicle to the people that come to Chingo Blink show. Like I want I want the reputation to be. When you go to Chingo show, hey bro, he brings some fucking heavy hitters, bro. Right. Like Javi Luna gonna be there. This other cat man, he got midnight. Like that's really what I want to pride myself on, uh, and I want to keep it that way as much as possible. You know, yeah. there's times and situations where it's like, yeah, hey, uh, like Javi and I might have had a local host in the in the city yeah. where it's like, ah, you know this guy? Yeah, no, all right, man, let's we rolling the dice with this boy. Yeah, yeah. It was, it Let me ask you this: Like, uh, I don't know how it applies to the comedy, but we were kind of talking about it on one of the previous episodes. Like, when it comes to music and comedy combined, and just the event itself, how much fans of you are you guys of making a stand-up show more than just a stand-up show? So, incorporating, like, I guess Schultz is the best example. He was doing it right, some sort of an act that's not related to music or comedy, but also having some music and also having like performers and also making like a big spectacle of it. Do you think that's like the evolution of? And the reason I say that is because going back to business and marketing, if you're if you're trading a commodity for money, you can always just price down to the cheapest commodity. But if you're offering more value. You have to offer something that's so good, people can't say no to it, right? So if your show is that much better because it offers so much more value than somebody just doing 30 minutes of stand-up, why would you not go to that show? Okay, well, give me an example of who Schultz had on with him. I didn't watch any of his, like, I have never been to a Schultz show, but I didn't, and I didn't watch a special, to be honest with you. Is there, like, a DJ or something? I mean, DJ, he had, like, the Dallas cheerleaders there doing yeah. something. He had uh, the, something else with there. The comedy and DJ, I mean, there's a history of that, especially, like, you go back to, to like, uh comic view huh. and and, yeah. and uh, i don't remember def jam yeah def jam had the dj yeah. well right, steve was right. a perfect example of just doing right. stuff right he does yeah. stunts and does things like he adds comedy to stunts and he has a whole visual where he shows this past jackass stuff i think i think it's, it's like multi to, to add ex- right. extra value to the show like mm-hmm. bring in some fun little stuff if there's if there's like a like a theme like e- even like my valentine show that i did back in corpus like like uh, at the end of the show, I brought out my the guitar and my, and my opener Danielle Torres came up and and we sang uh, "I'm Your Puppet." Oh, nice! T- together, you know, just kind of funny. She did a kazoo solo, <laughs> you know, just something to to leave him like, "Hey, man!" When I went to the Valentine show, like he's funny, man, but the, but then this right this happened, you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm your puppet. You know, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, you know, something so funny. It's a funny song. It's old school. I'm like, your puppet. That's why, that's why so many cholos are named puppet. You know. Because <laughs> of that song right there. And, and you know, Sing of the Mile, you know, maybe whatever, you know, within you, being a fucking mariachi band or, or you know, I, I don't know what. You know. We did that one time. It was a Sing of the Mile show. Yeah. I think it was Houston Improv and I went up to the stage with mariachis. Yeah. But, uh, but I got to see Schultz at when he came to Houston, and uh, if I had to like read his mind, I think he probably just got inspired by he he attended something and he's probably like I need to fucking reach this level of like this crowd is fucking nuts. I think it was actually a Metallica show. Yeah. I remember, oh, is that what it was? I believe it was. Yeah. He's yeah. like, this is a spectacle. It's an event. Okay. It's yeah. not just. And I think there's nothing wrong with adding entertainment value to a comedy show, right? It, it, it's you got to separate t- I mean comedy as entertainment and art are two separate things and they can coexist right you can you, there, yes there's pure stand up man and if you want that go to the comedy cellar you know it's low ceilings dark and and that's what it is and that's great that's co- comedy in its in its purest form but don't think you're going to go do that and stand on Madison Square Garden, mm-hmm. you know, unless you're like Stephen Wright or something. I don't even know if he's ever done a show that big, because you gotta if you're gonna do a show like that, you gotta fill that energy up, right? And if mm-hmm. you really want, like what we were watching last episode, we were watching the DMX video. Oh. If you want your comedy show, the only way to elevate comedy to that level of energy is you have to add something else to it and start looking at it as just an art form and looking at it as, as I'm providing entertainment value. Also. Now, I think you can't take it too far. 
Where he's like, bro, this ain't even stand up anymore. Like, like I think the dude told fucking three jokes. With that being whole, said, yeah. you know, he can, he brought on fucking five special guests in the middle of his set. He did shout like, outs all in the beginning. Shout out, yeah. shout out to all the, uh, shout, where, where are my, shout outs with everybody. Hey, where's everybody from this neighborhood? Where the single dads at? Yeah, which, which <laughs> I don't even. Give it, let me highlight the fellas real quick. Hey, it sounded my like kings, my show. My like, kings. Yeah. Oh, my kings. Stay vigilant. Right, which is, I think it's, it's a slippery slope, right? You know, slippery, slippery slopes all over the world. Man, like even even with the with this surge of crowd work comedy mm -hmm. being so popular, it it's before crowd work was a tool that you have as a comic that you develop. Like, hey, it, oh yeah, he can he work the crowd? Oh yeah, he's good at working the crowd, man. Uh, but now motherfuckers are making it their entire act. Mm. Like they are a crowd what? work comic are you serious like it's like this dude don't even have a set like i've never I, I, who the fuck oh yeah say names bro come on well even we, we, come on let's click Schultz Schultz had a whole, yeah, a whole, he had a whole crowd, crowd work special but, but, but it was edited he, from different sets from different i thought it was intentionally crowd work yeah, it was an intentional no. crowd work show in fact the whole show was crowd work yeah and in, sure and in fact there's a there's mm, a young comic from that. from here and i'm not knocking anybody right it's just understanding we're starting to see deviations and and even you know not necessarily bastardizations, but just the the art form is growing in 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 different ways. Just like in music, you have pop music. There's pop comics, and those and those comics are meant to do arena. Your joke, like Joy Coy just did the arena in Corpus, dude. I went to go see Bill Burr, who who is a a comics comic doing AT and T Center Arena. Uh -huh. If he wants to go larger than that, like it was great. It was a great show. It was funny. But the end, After that, it's, it, yeah. it, it, it felt awkward because I'm like, dude, there's fucking like 10,000 people in here just listening to one guy talk. Like it, it felt very It, it hits weird. different. It, yeah, it's different. Granted, he's so talented that he made it, he made that place feel about Intimate. as small as, as you could. But like, like Fluffy did. Dodger Stadium. He had to. It. He had to have lights yeah. and fucking. You know when when uh, when Kevin Hart did the first. You know fucking get fire on the ass. Yep. If he didn't have none of that, like dude, that show it would have fucking. That was sucked. Madison Square Garden, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't remember where he did. Was it might it have the been one Madison. in Philly. The one yeah. in Philly. Yeah. yeah. You know shit like that. Like you 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 got to bring something else to the table. But understand. You know there there is a. I think there is a, a vanishing point where you. You lose something. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Schultz's show in Houston, the only like spectacle-ish things that he uh -huh. did was there. Obviously, they got the big ass LEDs. So in the beginning, uh -huh. it's the uh, Bruce Buffer, Michael Buffer, one of them cats right. doing like, you know, let's get ready to rumble that whole yeah. thing. And uh, and then at the end, he brought up like I think a fan or two. Yeah. And they had a quick huddle. They're like, all right, we're gonna sing fucking Britney Spears or whatever, and like fucking quick tell the DJ. And uh, it was just like a thing where. You, just to cap off the night, probably to get that social media shot of like everyone fucking everybody in the back fucking sing mm -hmm. this shit just to show like we had a great time if you fucking miss this shit type of vibe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. That was the only like non stand up yeah. spectacle y things. Well, the thing with Schultz is that's a special that he did. Like, mm -hmm. He has material. But like even, but it's even, but right, like because it's, it's always monkey see, monkey do, right? You now you have guys that, that aren't at Schultz level that doesn't don't have his material doesn't have his his writing abilities like building their whole brand over like oh I, I, I went viral for this guy that was heckling me and I you know <laughs> oh wow whatever you know you know and 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 you know get it how you get it now they're doing you know you're a local comic and you got a whole crowd work show at at the uh at the improv you know like that's it's kind of weird, that, but mm -hmm. it's gonna be a splinter. It's gonna be a deviation. Like, hey, yeah, oh yeah, he's that guy. Yeah, he's a crowd work comic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's not a writer. He's not a writer. You want to? Oh, you want to go see writers? Mm -hmm. You don't go to the improv. You got to go to the Blind Tiger, you know, comedy comedy club. You know, it's like I wouldn't go to I don't know any Houston clubs, but like, like there's different music clubs, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you want to hear punk music. Yeah. Go to a punk club. Don't go to a country western bar mm -hmm. and be pissed off because mm -hmm. because they they you know they're not playing some fucking punk ass or hard rock ass shit. You know you went to the you went to the wrong establishment. I feel I think you know there's different uh, different lanes for Devi comedy, man. There's, yeah. there's gonna be guys that are gonna do stadiums and have fucking fireworks yeah. and have a band behind them. Mm -hmm. And if that's what you want to do, go do that. Yeah. And there's going to be dudes that want to do it in a, in a cafe with 50 people and like on some like fucking jazz shit, you know, mm. Hey, great. Go, go do that. Go be great at that. But the, the amount of people that Schultz had in there, like 
you have to take into consideration because it's almost like it fit perfectly to do what he did because it wasn't just like sure he could have just told jokes you know mm -hmm. what i mean but it just it, it was like a nice touch but um i just want to touch on this real quick speaking of that when you said deviations mm -hmm. that's interesting because the musical um appreciation exchange that rob and i would do like man check out this check out this all right you check mm -hmm. out these type of thing which we talked about on previous episodes but i feel like anytime you do like either film appreciation or music appreciation mm -hmm. you start to learn all the lingo and nomenclature and all the tropes and the tricks and see who deviated from who you know right. what i'm saying like right. okay did who did tarantino like in your opinion who did tarantino kind of like what did, who like who's he made a oh <laughs> right you know what i'm saying like the, the influences yeah whether it's like well there's a bit of film noir it just depends on how right. nerdy you want to get like oh is it alfred hitchcock did he play a role and this is that but when you when you peep like the history like let's just say music for example mm -hmm. when you understand all right okay what region okay oh you're telling me this rapper's from new york all right well who are his influences you know what i mean you start getting all algorithmic with it like okay is you're telling me this guy all right well what borough what era right you know because like 50 cent he's gonna have yeah, certain things and who, who is he trying modeling who, himself at? yeah i mean yeah we talk, inspired yeah. by everything right mm -hmm. you know it just kind of helps assess like like for example um when people try to compare like like latino stand-up comics like oh why is this guy beefing with this guy it's like they're not even the same style right they're two different styles y'all just looking at it because of their ethnic makeup Right, y'all putting yeah, these two people together. They got nothing in common. Totally different styles. In common. You wouldn't compare Jim Gaffigan with Dane Cook, right? Because they they ain't even you know you see their brands. Totally different, actually. They're, they're I had to think of like a hot pocket. Yeah, yeah. He sits there. And he's kind of like <laughs> this. Jim Gaffigan, clean. Yeah. Stands in one place. Yep. Boom, boom, boom. That, that's funny. Next voices joke. versus Dane Cook, who's jumping all yeah. over the place. He's the BK, physical, Burger King. He's he's, I call it the BK Lounge. <laughs> you, know, you know. It's like why is he moving like that when he sees when he says BK? Lounge? I want to do a B and E. A B and E. <laughs> what is that? Breaking and entering oh. a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. Oh fuck! Okay, dude, I haven't heard. Yeah, where, uh, his where shit climbs through the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, and it's like don't compare. So yeah, you can't do that. And 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 one thing is is comedy. Comedians have been super gatekeepy, right? They they did it to musical comics, right? Like oh oh you oh you that's a crutch. Oh what do you play guitar on stage or piano? Or do piano? Or? No, it's just a genre, guy. Just fucking let it let it be. Or even ventriloquist, right? Over oh, with your puppets. Yeah, it's yeah. ventriloquist comedy, whatever. Yeah, and there's hypnotism in comedy. Is, <laughs> or like, is it or in, like, hey, when I did props, when I did it in my model, yeah, I did characters, props and wigs. Characters. I gotta fill this time. <laughs> hey, whatever, and that's cool. Is it? I need same? a couple of volunteers on Why stage. Why are you trying <laughs> to compare, compare apples Senora and oranges? Tu. Yeah, they're both fruit. Halamela, halamela. And that shit was hilarious, bro. <laughs> It, it, was I put that, out the exercise band before I go do a show. Uh, don't forget my wigs and uh, my sports. Who track. wants to do burpees with me on stage? It wasn't any less or more entertaining than what we're doing now. It was just it was just a different type of entertainment for a different audience. And you know what's the main feedback I get? Oh, I thought we we're gonna like. Where's the Canelo? Hey, where's the? Yeah. Why, where's Tio? Hey, I thought we we're gonna be see Tio Juve. Can we see him dance? It's like no. I'm gonna talk about me, my personal life, and my family. Right. Ooh. <laughs> Gay boo, and that's fine. And there's an audience for that, right? Is it the same? Is it the same audience? We don't want to know the real that, you. Yeah, that, that's that's where you know finding finding your 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 lane is. There's nothing wrong with that. Comics used to feel. I used to hear it all the time. Starting off, with, funny is funny. Funny is funny. You have to be universally funny. No fuck me. That's how you end up being watered down. Fucking shit, shit. That's why my special is called "Not for Everybody," dude. Like, it's not for every. You're, there's gonna be motherfuckers gonna be like, "That wasn't funny." Yeah. At all. Some people don't have a sense of humor. Great, move the oh, fuck yeah. on. You obviously, obviously, our senses of humor do not match up, and I'm probably not for you anyway. So and, why would you want to come? And some people's comedic styles don't lend themselves sometimes to uh, viral reels. Like, mm -hmm. if you're more of a storyteller, or if you, you know. Right. 
whatever if that joke like man one of the hardest lines is the callback but if you you can't include that all in the fucking youtube short right or some people's style is a little bit more set up i'm having having a hard time right now one's trying to help me out because a lot of my 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 bits are are longer format now you know that that's just the kind of comic i grew into so i got to try to cut these down into one minute bits and we're like do we maybe make it a two-part or three-parter just so people can see it because unfortunately everything's getting absorbed and in in one minute increments right now so if you are a shorter style joke writer you know not necessarily set up punch but if you can tell that it's very short versus where you know my problem is my 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 bits go on forever because i tag the shit out of it like i'm 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 on one joke on this one joke for five six seven minutes before and then i got three more jokes on the same subject line that you know the the, chunks yeah (laughs) chunks i did I did an hour and five minutes this past weekend on each show, and I didn't repeat a single one of the jokes that I did on your show for 25 minutes. The people that came out, they're, they're like, they're like, oh man, we were hoping you were gonna do the substitute. You didn't do none of the substitute material. I was like, yeah, my whole my whole set that weekend with you was about substitute teaching. I did 25 minutes on substitute teaching That's crazy. that I've never done before. It's just where I'm at in in my writing right now. It's just it's flowing, you know. Dope. So. That's badass. So, but does, that makes my shit hard to turn it down to to mm-hmm. to a one minute. Yeah, you know, real. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Because we're in the we're in the real era. Yeah, which is you, fine. You, you know what's interesting? You just though? gotta find a different lane, man. You go, yeah, we're yeah. gonna find me a different way. You know, it, maybe this might relate back to the sales vehicle thing, but like, like there's some veteran comedians who maybe they've had like ups and downs, which everybody does, mm-hmm. to where they fuck around, have a whole resurgence. Yeah, Barsena is having... Oh, he, uh, yeah. Oh, a that's awesome. example of that. Mm-hmm. And, and well-deserved, dude. I mean, he honestly, you know, he, he... I mean, I've been a fan of his since since before I started doing comedy. Hilarious cat. So to see him, you know, but, you know his TikTok started... His, I think his son, I don't know the whole story, his son started putting his TikToks his his old mm-hmm. stand yeah video filming and on editing on TikTok and now he's generating new content now while he's on the road and he's you know going to be bigger than he ever was back when he was big the first time you know which is great that's why I'm saying man I got to ro- I got to start bringing the video guy bro yeah um it helps man mm-hmm. I, I'm trying to do better you know I'm a one man operation I try to record mine as best I can you never know what it helps for me is like the uh, I always open up with like a good like fresh five like it's just about that town I'm in or or something that that happened that day or, or whatever you know and to me that that's the best I can do because those are short little one offs you know like last night uh, I, I had the mic go off dude, so I, I started like doing my bit like whole oh, acapella like stuff like that like that's never gonna happen again like so whatever I said within that five minutes like that's not material to me like I, that can go up and, and you know, be be short little content filler. What if uh, Chingo Bling fans would go to a show expecting one song from the past to be like the finisher? Like yeah. you have your closer you joke and then song? your closer song. So in, in Brownsville, you do Puro Party and then you go to Denver and you do whatever, right? Cuvo. Uh-huh. And if they knew that like, because we've never really done content where you fuse music and the comedy together. Like if you were, took your old catalog, because it's evergreen. Music's awesome because it's evergreen. People always want to hear the hits, right? They always want to hear things that they loved growing up. Jokes yeah. sometimes too, but it's so much rarer to have like a bit people want to hear over and over again. But if they knew that you were fusing your content and then at a show, you'd get the experience of like the Jingle Bling stand-up hour and right. you'd get like a performance at the end of one song, you know, oh, like... Oh, oh, sorry. I was just going to... Go ahead. Go I was ahead. going to build off what he's... What if it even became like... Um, like while you're there, you shoot a a, a visualization, not necessarily, I wait. Not necessarily a, a a music video, but if you're get if you're having that camera crew, it, it's like, hey man, we're gonna release the 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 footage that we filmed here. It's gonna be with with the song playing over it. It's gonna be real hype. Like you pool, drop a rap for every city, pool party, and you yeah. get, and you're getting people in the crowd like, hey, pool party, whatever, and and you know they can look for that then they can, hey man you like like the whatever the video drops next week or whatever dude a 60 second music video where it's like different bars that from every you know you drop some bars for brownsville uh-huh. for instance and it's like that show is the music video for that you know short right, right. and then the next time you come back that that's the promo hey, for last, last, yeah, time for we last back, year this is all the fun we had and you got the music playing in, I, i'd have to think of how i would set it up yeah like in terms of like explaining it only because sometimes 
performing music at comedy clubs, it sometimes it lands a little flat. Uh-huh. And maybe because I'm setting it up wrong. Like, uh-huh. oh, well, you're doing it right from the beginning. And they're just sitting there. They just finished seeing someone tell jokes. And now you're fucking coming out here, want them to get yeah. crunk. So it almost had to be like, all right, guys, I, I know I'm 43. <laughs> I, I know I don't even really do music like that. But for me, could, could, could y'all just, you know what I mean, make me feel like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, almost like set up. Uh, and let's just say the song was Puro Party. You know, I have to just be delivered in a way it's to where it's like, it's like, y'all got to back me up. Like, I, I'm not going to do this. It's not going to work. Like, I, I'm not going to be up here for 60 seconds trying uh-huh. to force y'all to turn up if y'all not knowing what we're mm-hmm. doing so that you can, instead of they're just like, oh, okay, well, fuck, it's, it's, thought the show was over. But here you go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, do, I, you don't want me to get up, do you? Yeah, I think that would depend on on having, you know, a host that can get that energy up. I think it would be fine to start it off like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. You know, to, to to come on stage with one is, is a very high energy to come with, but then it has to, or to do it stay at the at end. Or do it at the right. end. So, but but if you're liking starting off slow, then yeah, because because if you start off, you can't do that and then go straight into like. Yeah. So a funny thing happened. Uh, right. On right. the way to the venue. Yeah. So you got to escalate it. To them be like, oh, what's airplane. up with airport food, airplane right. food? You guys want to talk about this idea over lunch? I'm sure you guys are hungry. Yeah, let's um, do it. Are we taking? How we doing on time? We're 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 there. Okay, bet for show for show, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank y'all so much for being the the littest part of this whole situation. You know, the audience member listening. Please tell a friend, share it. Um, yeah. Tour dates. Tour dates, a- a- April 6th, East Austin Comedy Club, uh, Gordito de Mayo on May 5th at uh, Upstage Comedy Club in San Antonio. Both those on my link tree. Uh, and uh, and don't forget the special March 10th on YouTube, Javi Luna, not for everybody. Hell yeah. Um, I don't know when this drops, but uh, check out my website, chingobling.com. You can see all my tour dates. I know we have Naples, March 5th, Odessa, Texas, March 11th, Fresno, California, March 23rd, Merced, California, March 24th, Visalia, March 25th. And I think we're doing Pasadena Ice House. That's right. George Lopez Home Club, uh, March 31st. Amazing, amazing video uh, venue. We have El Paso, April 6th through the 8th. So many more dates. Hit up the website. All my people in Sacramento, San Jose, Brownsville, Alamo, Texas, Albuquerque, Victoria, College Station, Waco, Austin, San Antonio. And we're working on some more because we got bills to pay. Thank you. Sass.